Welcome back to our second annual Thanksathon right here on Lundell TV, where you can watch on uh, Roku, Amazon TV, Apple TV, I believe, or just frankaspeech.com or download our app and watch us there. Thank you so much for staying with us. Until now, Brandon decided to take a quick break, so we are joined with Leo Holman. Happy Thanksgiving, Leo. Happy Thanksgiving to you, Annie. Great uh, to be here. It is so lovely to spend Thanksgiving and the rest of the weekend with you. Well, you spend Thanksgiving on the road. Most of it, but I did make it here to join the uh, house family for dinner, oh, and wow. it was delicious. Great. It was so good. Well, I had a nice one with my uh, family. Wife and two kids were there. Ate way too much, and uh, but I'm ready to go today. Perfect, perfect. Uh, so... Off air, we were discussing some topics. By, by the way, we, we always do this. Like me and Brandon, me and Leo, me and Patrick, with everybody, when we get a, uh, together, we just discuss the topics that we think about. Uh, as we were doing that, we built up to this very interesting topic for both of us. So we figured we're going to bring it to you. We were talking so about... Hold on tightly. <laughs> we have got... Yes, this was, this was a really no holds barred conversation uh i bared some of my opinions uh to annie before we got on the air here not expecting her to maybe uh agree with all of it or even half of it but i found out she was pretty much on the same page as me yeah as mike would say what a concept <laughs> it was a concept well that's the thing i have i have come to realize leo that Every time, like, it, it, the group of truth tellers, it's, even if it's a concept or a topic that I'm not an expert on or you're not too familiar with, but we do end up agreeing because we are factual and we prefer to hear the truth rather than any kind of sugar-coated or lies or fake information. So we do end up agreeing on that very topic. Uh, this one was, it kind of shocked me too. But let's get to it. So we were discussing... Communism, well, generally we were talking about socialism, communism, Islamism, all that, but then... All those isms. Isms, right? There's so, you use the term of ism with hope. What was it you called it? Hopium. Hopium. Hopianism? Explain that. Is that a word? Hopiumism? Uh, hopium, to me, is uh, when we get into the realm of false hope. I'm all for hope, realistic hope. Uh the Lord is coming back at some point. Amen. We don't know if it's going to be tomorrow, next year, or 10 years, or 100 years from now, but that's something we know that we can hope in. But when people start throwing out false messiahs and false hopes, uh, I think while it makes you feel good, like a good you know, crack pipe might make you feel good, right, in the short run, Yes. In the do, long don't, don't run. Don't they hand those out in Oregon? Where is it? In New York? I think or I think both of those places okay. you could probably do that. Yes, but, but uh, yeah, I think in the conservative movement today, we do ourselves a disservice when we try to latch onto false hopes that maybe get us through tough periods in the short term because everybody has a coping mechanism, right? Everybody has a tolerance level on, of which they can accept bad news. And let's face it, there's a lot of bad news out there right now. Yes, there is. But as you said, and Brandon always says, Mike Lindell and Andy Woods, uh, which was just with us, there is there's a lot of bad news, but there's at the end of the day, there's the great news. Yes. Jesus and that's coming what, back. that's exactly what should keep us from getting too down in the dumps and depressed. Maybe I'm different, but when I look around me in the world right now and I see the, all those isms, the Islam, Islamism and the communism and socialism, and really the worst to me is globalism. Um, they are all have one thing in common, and that is tyranny. They want to remove what's left of our freedom in the largest free country in the world. And they use these different, the globalists to me are the, on the top of the food chain, and they use these different isms. They use the Marxism, commun, Marxist communists, they use the uh, 
the, the jihadists, they use uh, the, the more um, vanilla socialists, but they're all driving us towards the same point, which mm -hmm. is outright tyranny. And um, that, if you look at it, is probably too scary for most people in America right now to comprehend or go there. And so they, uh, in order to get through to the next day, the next week, the next month, they need to feed and inject that hopium, right? If they could get it intravenously, I think it would be the best, you know, just directly into their veins. Um, and so that's what I think we maybe should talk about. What are some of these false hopes that are going around uh, that sound good in the short run and may help you get by to next, the next day or the next week, but they're not really going to help you in the long run. Why? Because you've you're being distracted. You're taking your eye off the, the ball, um, and you're not really focusing on the real enemy and the real solutions, even more, than the, even more importantly than the, who is the enemy, which is very important. Uh, what are the solutions? I personally believe, and I think maybe we could start off by talking about the midterm elections. They were a disaster, let's be frank. Um, we're on frank speech, right? Are we allowed to be frank? Let's be frank, <laughs> which is the name of our Sunday show, but yes, let's be frank. Uh, okay. Yes. Um, yeah, we, we, we ended up with a slim majority in the House. We lost the Senate. We lost several key governorships. I mean, uh, Hochul in New York and, and, and Gretchen Whitmer in Michigan, um, you know, and, and it looks like Kerry Lake's not going to win Arizona. Um, that, to me, was a disaster. Yes, we scored some wins, but at the end of the day, I think what we're going to find out is that the Democrats won just enough to get them through to 2024 without disrupting their agenda too much. Just to make sure, because how I phrase this, I normally say, um, so we had the midterm election, uh, and it wasn't all stolen, but it was f the fraud was applied where it was needed. But then at the same time, they threw us a little tiny bit of a bone here. It's like, hey, look, you're winning some, right? And then you're not winning some, and then some of them are very clearly being like hijacked stolen i don't even know which one is worse hijacked stolen whatever word works better like as you said arizona carrie lake um i believe it was yesterday that i heard or day before i heard mike lindell said it's a still an ongoing so i believe there is a court situation where they're going to look into the arizona so and it looks like the ag may be taking that up I, yes I, I, okay but that's the thing without it being a false hope we do still have some hope right. with Kerry Lake in Arizona, but... At the end of the, the day... <laughs> at the end of the day, exactly. At the end of the day, uh, the general, I will agree with you, the general midterm was absolutely a disaster. Uh, if this midterm, like 2020, because I know, unfortunately, there are still people who are like, oh, 2020 was in a stolen, the election was fine... If 2022 didn't double down on convincing everybody that definitely, most definitely, our election system is corrupt and f at least full of flaws and errors, I really don't know what else will com convince them. Like, I don't know. Uh, I agree. I mean... Ayatollah Khomeini being elected, <laughs> I guess that's the only thing where it's like, oh, yes, that's flawed. I remember uh, being interviewed by Brandon about a year ago. I was telling you off air this. And we were talking about the uh, soon to kick off 2022 midterm elections. It really, the, the campaigning hadn't really even started yet in earnest. We were talking about an uh, election that was going to happen one year from then. And I said that I was keenly interested in these midterm 2022 elections, much more than uh, normal would I be, ever be paying attention to a midterm election. Normally, we focus on presidential elections, but I was so interested in this upcoming 22, 2022 midterm because, to me, it was going to reveal a lot. 
it was going to reveal a lot about 2020. Was that uh, election, which we all thought was stolen, a one-off that we could just attribute maybe to some, you know, interesting COVID rules that they put into place with ballot drop box, drop off points, unsupervised drop boxes, and uh, all of the unsolicited mail-in ballots. And of course, we had the machine issue, but I think that's probably been going on for quite some time. But they put basically new voting rules into effect. And I was interested to find out if that was going to be just applying to 2020 or would it continue on in 2022? And would we have more elections stolen? And if that were the case, I told them that I would at that point have to reevaluate the way I think about elections in the United States. And sure enough, enough was stolen again in these 2022 midterms that when I honestly reevaluate, I have to come to this conclusion. And it's not just a na on a national U.S. America basis. I think this is a global phenomenon. We are entering into a post-election era in the formerly free Western world. Trudeau. Say. Yes. Trudeau. This man is so unpopular if you talk to Canadians and yet he continues to get just enough votes to, to stay on. To stay on. Uh -huh. Macron in France, same deal. Now we have the Bolsonaro election in, in Brazil. Brazil. Yes. Um, and we could go on down the line with these elections. Now, Italy was a, a bit of a, uh, a, a difference. Um, but maybe how are we to know that it's not the same phenomenon that you were describing where we give them just enough so that they can think that their elections are still legitimate. And I think that's where we are. Uh, we, we won't lose every election. There will be some wins. But we will always lose just enough. And, and if you look at this, uh, we lost the Senate. We have this slim majority in the House, which now if we just have a few rhinos to cross over, they can uh, continue on passing Biden's agenda. Um, and even in the country like Sri Lanka, they had that huge uprising. And at the end of the day, they ended up, the one they were angry at resigned, but they ended up with the one who was even more tightly tied in with the WEF, the World Economic Forum agenda. Yeah, but, but let me stop you for a second because the, the, you just said something that I'm, I'm going to talk about. You, of course, you can disagree or you can back me up on this. But did you just notice, so let's go back quickly to 2009. Green movement in the Islamic Republic of Iran due to election fraud. Uh, then you got the Sri Lanka uprising due to election fraud. You have Brazil now uprising to the election fraud we go yep. back to november 2020 nada right nobody even questioned it right well some of us did what i mean is the reaction isn't it ironic and interesting leo that every country that does react with an uprising with a petition with anything are the countries that don't have our First Amendment, which allows us to petition our government, but the only country on earth with that right didn't do anything about it? And I want to make sure I understand two years later, people like Mike Lindell have done great work exposing, bringing evidence, creating lawsuits. But I'm talking about that moment, that very moment. We went forward with, oh, well, well let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Let's see if Trump's going to con concede. Is that what the board? Mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm. If Trump's going to do this, oh, January 6th happened. Let's be scared and go home. Now back J January 6th. You look at the general picture. It's like 2020, re lack of reaction to 2020 has given them, being the left, the communist, socialist, Islamist, American hating people, has given them the strength and the boldness to do what they did this midterm, which was right in your face. They're not even afraid of doing it. And I blame that on the lack of reaction by us Americans, November of 2020. What say you? I agree. I couldn't agree more there. And the key thing that you just said is they're no longer hiding it from us anymore. They're boldly speaking it out. 
Um, Biden, if you rec- recall, right before the election, uh, that last speech that he made addressing the nation in prime time, I think it was one week before the November 8th uh, midterm election, he basically said, uh, vote for us or else. Now, what kind of president who is uh, truly fearful of the electorate and, and trying to pick up as many votes as possible when he knows he's unpopular would say something like, vote for us or else, th- basically threatening the entire American electorate. That sounds more like something tyrants do. Or something like when you, you know, it, it's kind of in the same rhythm of your own nothing and to still be happy. I was the same narrative. Just going to go there. That is the World Economic Forum. Uh, one of the talking points, I guess I should say, of the World Economic Forum since 2016 or 17 when that video came out about uh, what life would be like um, under this restructured world. They, they ended up calling it the Great Reset. But Klaus Schwab, uh, I think it was in 2018, was being interviewed, and he was bragging about, we've played the interview here, I mean the video here before, but he was bragging about how uh, his, his organization, the World Economic Forum, had, quote, penetrated the uh, cabinets of so many different countries. And he said that we have uh, half, if well, more, more than half of the Trudeau cabinet is graduates from the Young Global Leaders, School of Young Global Leaders at the World Economic Forum. Argentina, Macron in France, Putin in Russia. This was before the Ukraine war, so Putin was still uh, a member in good standing. Um, and he was bragging about all of these different cabinet level positions that he now controlled. And so this goes back to the point I was trying to make a bit earlier, a, a, that we have entered a post-election world. It was always a post-election world if you're talking about countries like Iran or Russia or China. I'm talking about the free world, the, the, the part of the world that we always used to refer to as the free world. He's the leader of the free world if he's the president of the United States. These are the countries that supposedly operated on democratic uh, norms of dem- democracy, meaning you elect people to represent you. That is no longer happening. These people are, who are running these governments, whether it be the Netherlands with Mark Root, you know, the New Zealand with Jacinda Ardern, Macron in France, Trudeau in Canada, the Biden administration, they are all puppets of the World Economic Forum. They're all pushing that same agenda that's coming down from the World Economic Forum and the United Nations. And what is that agenda? We see it in the ESGs, the uh, corporate ESG movement, where large corporations are all agreeing to a set of principles, Annie, that would be foreign to any Judeo-Christian value systems. Uh, you know, the transgender movement, the green energy movement, all of these movements are connected. It's all part of the ESG movement to water down the electorate, have puppets of the World Economic Forum installed in these governments of the free world, and so they now think that they're still free because they have these elections, Mm -hmm like we talked about, and they're not losing every single one of them, just enough, but it's somebody else's agenda at the end of the day that's being put forth in these capitals, whether it be Paris, London, uh, or Washington. It doesn't matter. We're all seeing the same agenda right now of war on food, war on energy, move towards World War III. War um, on family. War on family, the, absolutely. War on churches. War on churches, at least the type of churches that still believe in the Bible and biblical values. Oh, I, I, the, the, the other ones that don't, like the, for lack of a better term, the fake churches, I don't fake even church. refer to them as churches. Right. I just call them the corporation on their 501c because they are not, like, uh, sadly, there are many churches with a church name on them but you walk in there you look into what they're doing between interfaith dialogue and COVID Mm -hmm. lockdowns and Mm -hmm. oh go home you don't need to worship this Sunday because COVID might kill you they are not churches they are not there 
uh, as a church, but they're there. You got to love English. They're there. They are there to collect more money under their 501c status. They don't want to lose their nonprofit status because then they're going to lose the money. So they are a corporate functioning just like other corporates yep. on their name of church. So whenever I say the name church, I'm referring to Andy Woods Church. Yeah. You know, the true genuine churches that are still with us the ones that still... you mean never stopped meeting during covid because... exactly <laughs> they never shut down they never went hiding they never approached uh, their congregation with oh you got to take the vaccine those churches and there's a heavy they are on their heavy attack either the pastors or the congregation or the uh, church itself 100 percent. and that's how they also attack families like, I, if I'm saying it correctly, the biggest attack is a uh, nuclear family, right? When there's a mother, father, right. and children. J just, I I'm going to share a personal story with you or experience. Um, as of right now, someone like me as a, you know, single person, if I wanted to adopt a child, did you know I would be lower on the priority list than a gay couple? And I am telling you this based on experience a few months ago. I was literally contacted and pushed down on the list because there was a gay couple, two fathers, who were more qualified than me, not on finances, not on credibility, not on having a clean background, not even having a single traffic ticket in America. No. Based on we always prefer two parents over one. <laughs> That, that doesn't surprise me, Annie. And uh, it's sad. It's a sad state of affairs, but it does, unfortunately, not surprise me. Uh, that's that's the, the woke culture right now. I mean, it, what we're talking about is a, it's a war on, 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 on allowing people to make choices. Unless the choice is the wrong choice, then you're going to get priority, like Annie just said just laid out but uh this this wokeism that people refer to uh it's really just the esg movement the social which the esg movement is for corporations the same as what we would call the social credit scoring system for individuals uh you get points for doing things that line up with the globalist agenda you get demerits for not aligning yourself with those values and so uh, what we're seeing is a war on personal sovereignty, meaning the individual as a sovereign being. You don't what? You don't want to have this uh, foreign substance shot into your arm? Well, then you can't have a job. You can't go into uh, a restaurant unless you show your digital papers. Um, you know, so it's a war on the individual sovereignty. It's also a war on national sovereignty. And, and the whole UN global one government system, you can see how it's being laid out. Right now they're working on what's called the pandemic treaty. It's going to be laid out next summer uh, and they're going to, uh, they're working on it right now where in matters of international health emergencies, a country once signed onto this treaty, Annie, will no longer uh, have its own national government be making the decisions on how to respond to that so-called health emergency of international concern. You will now have to follow the response guidelines, and they may call them guidelines, but in effect they're mandatory, of the what? World Health Organization, the UN World Health Organization. That's who will be making decisions regarding your health if this treaty gets adopted next summer, I believe it's going to be uh, in August when they hold the uh, International Health uh, Convention in uh, Switzerland. Yeah, but, but I, I just want to add this, Leo, and please do correct yeah. me if I'm wrong, but I want to make sure our fellow Americans understand this. I'm not going to say if. When this treaty is signed and adapted, American citizens... If they choose to disobey this treaty, we do have the right. Remember, 
Under our Constitution, no foreign law shall be applied or practiced in United States of America. No world order can be applied to American citizens, but that is up to you. You got to choose not to practice it. If you're given like you did during COVID, mm -hmm. during lockdown, during vaccine, vaccination mandates, if you do that, that's your choice. But I'm just letting you know, if even one American following that foreign law that was adapted by UN, you're going to make all of our jobs harder to mm -hmm. fight back because, again, thank God. Our Constitution allows us to stop obeying or being forced to do anything we do not want to do, especially when it comes from outside of the America. Am I correct on that, Leo? Absolutely. But the big question remaining here is, will the U.S. Senate ratify this treaty? Or will the Biden administration just try to do it by some sort of executive? Pen? Yeah, pen, ex there you go. Yeah, That's I don't. That's why I have mine. I don't think his will be as pretty as yours. Oh, but thank you. But Well, I'm identifying as President of the United States of America today by holding a pen and a mm -hmm. cell phone. Right. There you go. And so if the Senate does ratify it, and it is a you know, traditional treaty, the way treaties are normally ratified, then that is going to have the force of law. Uh, but we still, I agree with Annie 100%, whether it's uh, done by you know, Senate ratification or or by pen, if it is telling us to do something that is against our uh, our de what do they call that? Your sincerely held religious beliefs, I mm -hmm. think, is the is the legal term. Uh, if they are trying to force us to to violate our sincerely held religious beliefs, uh, or even just our own personal conscience, if we're not religious then um, that, then we have a problem. And uh, this is where the rubber is going to meet the road. And Annie is exactly right. If it is the same pattern that we saw play out during COVID and 80% of the people go along with it, you know, 80% of Americans got these shots. Now, some people got the shots, the COVID so-called vaccine, mRNA, experimental vaccines, because they actually believed the media propaganda. They actually thought it would be good for their health. And I can't help those people, okay? Those people are so uh, detached from reality and so indoctrinated that they no longer can, are, are able to think rationally. Well, technically, you could help them. You revoke their American citizenship and you send them to China, Russia, or Iran. For a good lesson, right. There you go. But it's the other crowd that concerns me even more, and I'm going to tell you who those folks are. It's the ones who knew that this vaccine was potentially harmful to their health. They'd read pieces uh, in the Gateway Pundit or LeoHoman.com or Brennan House Live they watched or... They saw Dr. McCullough being interviewed by Brandon House, and they realized that this was not going to be a good thing for them medically, but they did it anyway. Mm -hmm. Why? Because their job was threatened. Folks, that is where we're, we've gone off the rails in this country. If you are doing something that you know is wrong, and it violates your conscience because your employer said that he will fire you if you don't do it, then you're no longer a free individual. You are, you are already owned. Uh, and so it doesn't matter if you have the First Amendment or the Second Amendment because you're not going to exercise it. If you're afraid to exercise your First Amendment rights, what good is it? If you're just going to kowtow to these bullies and not stand up for yourself and for freedom and for really what this country is supposed to be all about. I had that very discussion with a dear friend of mine a couple of days ago, and I said the problem is, and I, I, I don't mean to offend anyone, but if I do, I'll, well, that's my First Amendment right, so let's do it. <laughs> I was saying it feels like the problem in America, especially with the, you know, last two generation in America. 
uh, they didn't have to fight for their freedom. Freedoms are like maxed out to, there is no limits anymore. So it feels like the concept of freedom has become this illusion. Mm -hmm. They don't practice it anymore. Mm. It's just there. Yeah. Because I use myself as an example, Leo. When I came to America, I was 18. I'm 38 now, stepping into 39 soon. I had to learn the concept of freedom because I had no understanding of it. To right. me, just waking up in the morning and taking my first breath was freedom because it, my male guardian decided not to kill me, right? That was my understanding. Took me a while to understand and learn the freedom in America. Now, I learned it because I, I came to it at 18. A lot of Americans just were born to it. So when you don't have the understanding of certain concepts, it's nothing but an idea. Right. It's an illusion. The reason it has been so much easier for the corrupt regime in America and the uh, elites and the Islamists and the communists and socialists to take these freedoms very gradually, it's taking away an illusion is super easy. Give them a new illusion, such as deadliest virus we've ever faced yeah. that's a new illusion that's gonna take their mind off of the other delusion right or give them the illusion of guns kill people right instead of the last uh, you know mass shooting at a school is a tragedy however we need to make sure we train our kids you know on self-defense and we need to make sure we have armed securities at a school that is not the offers guns kill people it's so many examples to be used but at the end of the day, as a, I don't like calling myself that, but as a foreigner looking into gen general picture in America, freedoms have become an illusion. So it's so much easier to take them away. One, that is an excellent point, uh, Annie. I mean, it really does go back to the old adage, you don't use it, you lose it. Mm -hmm. And what happened during COVID was these globalist elites, these power brokers like, you know, Bill Gates, Klaus Schwab, Yuval Noah Harari, uh, and, and all of their minions, they realized that for millions of people in the free world, America, Canada, Western Europe, this idea of freedom really wasn't that real to them. It really was just an illusion. Uh, you know, they were willing to make huge sacrifices uh, like, you know, like I said, some believed the fear porn, uh, and I can excuse that, you know, uh, those people are hooked into the wrong message centers. I, I flew here th this morning on a Delta flight, and, you know, I, I saw several people with watching TV as they're flying, and what do they have on? CNN oh. or MSNB. One guy actually saw he had CNN, and then he he's looking what he's going to go on to next and he he picks msnbc <laughs> even <laughs> better right this See, is not brainwashing me enough yeah, i need something exactly. stronger cnn wasn't strong enough dosage of uh of of lies for him and so he had to switch to msnbc and so for those people they're hopeless i i not, nobody's totally hopeless as long as they still have the breath of life in them, but that's as close to hopeless as you get. Somebody who really actually believes what they're hearing on CNN and MSNBC, and we have far too many of those people, but just as big a problem is we have these other people who do know the right thing, but they're just not willing to stick their neck out on the line uh, you know, they're not willing to put themselves out there. They're willing to let me and you do it, and they might write us a check once in a while, and I, you know, I'm, I, I'm blessed for that. But, folks, we need more than just a check now and then. We need backup. We need the more from the masses. of. Now, I know you're never going to get 50, 60, 70 percent of a nation to do what's right, but you can get whatever you need and what is that it's the critical mass is what you need the critical mass is what changes countries or preserves countries it took three percent uh in the revolution for this country to become a nation at that point a, a nation that stood for freedom and and biblical values when we were taking on a tyrant right now i don't know if we have three percent in this country who'd be willing to put their lives on the line if that's what it meant to keep this nation free. Um, but I have a feeling we might find out. 
we might find out maybe sooner than we want to. Um, Agreed. Annie. Agreed. Uh, let me just take a very quick moment. Uh, first of all, uh, a special thanks has to go out to Mike Lindell because, well, if it wasn't for Mike Lindell, his commitment to freedom and uh, calling out, you know, election fraud, this network wouldn't be put together. Uh, so thank you, Mike Lindell, for everything you do for us. And thank you for these uh, special programmings on thanks a -ton. I personally have a lot to be thankful for. But Mike Lindell is definitely on the la thankful list of mine. Brian House, thank you for um, putting all of this together. He is brilliant, isn't he? And he's not in the room, so the, I, did, I didn't get paid to say that. I think he's down there eating lunch. I know. I just want to make sure it's like uh, I'm not getting a check to say this. But he's brilliant. Yes. And I love how like he gets on it. He organized the whole thing, gets the guest on, you know. Most it, people who have an operation of his size have assistants to do everything. Not him. Brandon uh, and Logan, can't forget him, and the guys back there, uh, they do it all themselves. Yes. I mean, they book their own shows. They do all their own interviews. They tape interviews. They do other interviews live. Uh, you know, I even said, you know, I called Brandon as I was uh, landed on the ground here in Memphis, and I said, are you going to have somebody come pick me up? He said, no, just get a cab, and, and I'll reimburse you for it. <laughs> you know, he makes decisions on the fly, but only a very smart and very energetic person could run an operation the way Brandon does. And, yeah, he yes. is definitely a one-of-a-kind person that I am thankful for. Agreed. And, of course, Logan, Reagan, Van, everyone in, uh, yes. you know, you know, well, he, here's what I love. You saw me saying them, like, you know, they just make me look good. I love that. I don't know what their filter is, but I love it. <laughs> Stop giggling, Logan. I can hear you. No, I can't. I'm kidding. But, uh, yes, I want to make sure we thank everyone behind the scene, in, you know, on camera, off camera, but most importantly, our audience. Because, honestly, we could sit here for 24-7 and just keep talking and informing, but if we didn't have our uh, really, really strong uh, believers that are our audience who put their support behind us, uh, who share the, you know, videos and clips, and they're, they're always there, you know. They're, even I'm looking at the comment section, you know, they, they support, they give you that emotional support you need. Uh, they put your websites out. And as you said, yes. you know, in any shape or form they can. So thank you. On this Thanksgiving, we are definitely grateful for all of you. And on that note, um, let me just quickly say, if you want to continue supporting Mike Lindell, Lindell TV, frankspeech.com, and Brandon House, who has been on air many hours since yesterday, uh, make sure to go to mystore.com, mystore.com, or you can go to mypillow.com. Uh, do any of your shopping left for Christmas. If there's a birthday coming up, hey, if you're me, just buy something for yourself. Use the promo code THANKS7. There's an S at the end, just in case if my accent's getting in the way. That's THANKS7. Uh, you get discount and... Um, you continue supporting Mike Lindell, Lindell TV, Frank's Speech, and Brand House. Uh, I'm sure most of you are familiar with most of the items, but you'd be surprised. I have many people tell me, like, what else do you Mike have on my store? I'm like, I don't know. I mean, uh, there will be something new coming up, I'm sure. But there are so many things you can find there. I I'm think like, my uh, wife is going to be getting me one of those robes. Is that a hint, hint right now? Yeah, Did if, you if you're watching, that? yeah. I have this old torn up robe that i wear in the winter we live in georgia so you don't wear one in the summer spring or fall but when it gets chilly about this time of year and you get up in the morning to have your morning coffee you want to you know put that robe on this robe has sentimental value to me because it was my grandfather's it was Aww. handed down to me from him somehow when when he passed away and uh, but now it's got like holes in the uh elbows and and it's tearing up all over the place. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to get a my pillow robe if I'm a good guy and I, you know, uh, if I'm if I'm nice and not naughty. As, how does that go, naughty well, or nice? De if, depend. Who's yeah. who's voting? Democrats, Muslims, Republicans, or your wife? Because that's going to make a difference <laughs> right. on which list I will you're definitely make it to. be a naughty boy if it's up to the Democrats yes. or the Muslims. Yes. Right. 
because I have that book out there called Stealth Invasion that they Muslims really didn't like. And then uh, everything I write at my website um, uh, would offend the uh, communists, Marxists, and socialists, and globalists. So, yeah, thank God. I think it's just her my wife who will be voting on that. Good, good. <laughs> and uh, talking about Leo's website, leohoman.com. That's L-E-O-H-O-M. A N N. Yes, I do H-O-H, have. H O H. You forgot an H. Oh, that's H-O-H. right. No, that, I, I forgot the second H. You're right. <laughs> so leohoman.com, leohoman.com. Because at the end of the day, yes, we want your support. Absolutely, majority of the support to go to Mike Lindell and Frank Speech and Lindell TV. However, uh, everybody who is involved, especially in the next few days, uh, they will need your support as well. And we all know Leo, Leo as, as Brandon would say, Leo is no stranger here on Lindell TV. A uh, brilliant mind who keeps it factual, does not over-exaggerate, does not under-credit anything that needs to be up and said. So... Mm-hmm. Thank you. That's actually very nice of you to point out because w- one of my pet peeves as a journalist is clickbait headlines. <sighs> um, so I try to stay away from the sensational um, and just sort of lay it out for you there in the headline and e- even into the uh, body of the articles that I write. Um, there's some uh, folks that I don't even go to their YouTube anymore because I've learned that if I just go by the headline, it always falls short. Um, it's not quite as imminent. It's not quite as uh, 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 doomsday-ish as the headline would indicate. So I try to keep it factual. Just say what they, you know, if you look at my current uh, headline, let's just take that as an example right now. Um, if we go to leohoman.com, uh, smart, most people put their glasses on to read. I have to take them off. <laughs> um, smart cities worldwide are being converted into, quote, open concentration camps, unquote, says ex-Silicon Valley engineer turned whistleblower. And this is based on an interview with a gentleman named Amen Jabi. He's an Indian American who worked in Silicon Valley for 25 years. And he's saying that Basically, these smart cities, which is all, basically all the major cities right now, and uh, if they're successful in carrying this out, it will be even smaller and medium-sized cities, are installing the infrastructure right now, have been really over the last uh, two to three years, mm-hmm. uh, that uh, amounts to a digital spy network in in, built right into the infrastructure of the city. We have one billion digitally connected cameras, surveillance cameras, in public spaces right now. By the end of this year, 2022, which we're almost there, there will be one billion of these digital surveillance cameras in cities around the world. And this is what shocked me about what Amin Jabi said. The country with the most cameras is China. That's not surprising because we know they are the leader, really, in the in the technocratic uh, movement of surveilling people 24/7 everywhere, um, and then punishing them if they violate the, the the rules. But the country, Annie, with the most surveillance cameras per capita is the United States of America. We have 50 million. Uh, of these public surveillance cameras on street corners, street wow. lights. Uh, they're putting up these new LED light posts, if you've seen those being going up along mm-hmm. certain corridors, uh, roadways, even interstates now. Those are being outfitted with cameras and in many cases also speakers with fi- the fiber op- optic cable running under the ground into them for 24-7 surveillance. Um, and so 50 million of those in the United States already, and that does not include mobile cameras. This mm-hmm. is just like, or cameras inside people's homes that they, uh, you know, p- put up on their own. This is just taxpayer-funded surveillance cameras. They call them eyes, the, the Internet of eyes and the Internet of ears, because they also, many of them have speakers. And so they're listening and they're watching 
every car that goes by, every person that walks by, they can facially recognize people with through facial recognition software. They can hear what you're saying. They can see what you're doing. And when that, uh, uh, and how is it being installed? The way that they're doing it, unlike in China, where in China, in China, people know they're being watched by the government. They know they're being spied on and surveilled, monitored, and, and give, given a social credit score. In the United States, we have the same infrastructure, but we don't realize how it's being used. It's sold here as uh, something that's essential to safety and security. Safety and security. We're just installing this to catch the bad guys. Okay? So people don't realize that it's going to be turned against them. When is that going to happen? When we get the digital money system and the digital global ID system, and the two are wedded together in a uh, one-world digitally marked system, that, that is when they will be able to assess you the social credit score, just like they do in China, under threat of what? We can freeze your bank account. We can limit where your money in your bank account will be allowed to be spent. We can uh, confine you to a certain pod, maybe a 10 or 15 mile radius uh, within where your house of where you live, and your money won't, be, uh, won't work outside of that pod because it's not just digital money, it's programmable money. And the Biden administration, shocking to most people, they're not aware of it. Why? Because the mainstream corporate media doesn't cover it. Uh, the Biden administration last week announced that the, the uh, Federal Reserve System, the Federal Reserve Bank, is now already working on a pilot program with four or five of the nation's largest banks, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, uh, Citibank, uh, I think Chase, uh, four or five of them are working with the Federal Reserve on a new digital programmable money pilot program. And uh, so they're just ironing out the kinks of the system. And the only question, Annie, now is not whether or not we will get a new digital money system to replace actual physical cash dollars, but when will that happen? And once it does, and that gets, as I said, uh, incorporated, intertwined with that digital health passport that they want on your phone, the phone app, that if it shows green, that means you're up to date on your shots and you can go into the restaurants and the ball games and the concert halls. But if it turns red, oh my gosh, then you're not up to date on your shots. You haven't gotten the latest booster. You are forbidden from entry. And that the plan is, and this is all coming down from the World Economic Forum. I'm not making this up. You can go to the World Health Organization, the WHO, and the WEF, and read this on their own websites. And it also came out of the G20 meeting a couple weeks ago, uh, where they, uh, the G20, that's the nation's 20th largest economies, they all agreed, the Biden administration included, and you can go on the White House uh, website and find this document, says that they are going to be pushing for vaccine uh, digital health passports among all nations that are going to be set to one standard, mm -hmm. and that standard will be set by the United Nations World Health Organization. They will define uh, whether or not uh, you have the proper proof that you are who you say you are and that you don't have a COVID-positive virus running through your system and therefore, if you can't prove it, if you don't have the app on your phone, you will not be allowed. And that is the word that the Indonesian health minister used at the G20 meeting. You will not be allowed to move about <laughs> and travel freely. Oh, watch me. <laughs> but let, let me just go over something as I was scanning through the comments. First of all, thank you for everybody who's commenting and engaging with us. I do have my eyes on them. And if I see questions, I'll make sure to read them. But there's an interesting comment here that I'm going to read real quick. And it's directly to me. It says to Annie. And the comment says, the Constitution 
The U.S. Constitution, Article 6, Section 2 states, This Constitution and the laws of the United States, which shall be made in pursuance thereof, and all treaties made, or which shall be made under the authority of the United States, shall be the supreme law of the land, and the judges in every state shall be bound thereby any things in the Constitution or law of any states to the contrary notwithstanding. As I read this, a treaty becomes the supreme law of the land. To the person who made this comment, I appreciate this section, uh, an article you sent me, but here's a few things. What I mentioned originally in my comment was this will be a foreign law, therefore it cannot be practiced, but if you give in to it automatically, it's harder, harder for us to push back. This is exactly what I was talking about. Do you really think there was a supreme law in America regarding mask mandate? No, it wasn't. Enough people just started varying it where it became mandated without it being a supreme law in the country. If you actually look into most of the mandates during COVID, including lockdowns, including social, social distancing, including vaccines, it, was, it is still nowhere near our supreme law of the country. We just did it without being forced to do it. So the statement I made was, until this is a foreign law, we can push back to make sure it doesn't become a supreme law in this country. And as I said, I appreciate the article, but this will not become a supreme law in America if enough Americans push back. Because again, within our constitution, the power of this country is in our hands and not those in government. If we remember our power given to us by God, we will stop worrying about some of the articles in the Constitution that is creating the delusion that we don't have the freedoms that we actually do. What say you, Leah? Yeah, technically the, uh, the, the viewer there is correct that properly executed, and that's the key, mm -hmm. uh, treaties with foreign entities do have the power of law in, to the sense that they supersede the Constitution. Uh, <clears throat> we don't know yet whether this will be a legally duly constituted treaty with the actual U.S. Senate uh, weighing in with a two, is it a two-thirds vote that I, I'm not sure if it's a two-thirds vote or a simple majority, but I think it may be a two-thirds. Uh, that would be pretty hard to achieve given the current politics. And also, wouldn't it even be harder to achieve if American people petition uh, the Senate. Absolutely. If the American people say, as your boss, I don't want you to agree to this treaty. Absolutely. Yeah. Go, that's that's where the fight back comes in. We got to stop waiting for things to become law before we fight them. That's my point, Leo. That, that is so true. We've got to stop obeying these unconstitutional orders. I mean, uh, from a biblical standpoint, people always throw out uh, Romans 13, where it talks about the authority of government, and we should obey that. But it's the context of that scripture is that government operating within its boundaries, within the lane that uh, of the of, of government, meaning uh, it's not jumping outside of its jurisdiction and doing something that is outside of the bounds of, of, of a godly government. Once the government starts passing laws that go against, I mean, here's a good example, Nazi Germany. Um, a lot of people obeyed those dictates in Nazi Germany, too, because they were Christian and they thought, oh, Romans 13, we're supposed to obey the government. You don't obey an ungodly government that's outside of its lane and trying to force you to uh, do commit ungodly acts like throw Jews in concentration camps or be silent about it like so many were. Even if they weren't actively participating in it, they were silent about it. And silence equals compliance. And that's the same thing we're dealing with here, and I think that's what Annie is talking about. If we don't if we don't speak out and we just obey when our conscience tells us it's wrong, then we are going against our obligations as not only free people who are living under a constitutional republic, 
Uh -huh. But also a, a Christian who has a free will and a free conscience. You were created, me and you, with free wills. The World Economic Forum uh, elites, they don't believe we have a free will. Yuval Harari said, free will, that's over. And it's interesting the examples that he threw out if you watch the video of him in this interview when he's trying to tell us that we no longer have a free will. He said, you go into a grocery store and pick out what you want to eat or you go into an election booth and pick out who you want to vote for. He said, that's over. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? And those two things just happen to be uh, two issues very near and dear to the heart hearts of the globalists. They don't want us eating meat. They don't want us eating dairy. They want us to eat bugs, insects. They're building huge uh, cricket farms in Canada and Illinois right now uh, so they can substitute real meat with fake meat made out of cricket substance or grown in a lab. And then we've talked about the elections already where as I said, it's, and, and I don't want to speak out of line for anyone else here, this part is just my opinion. I'll always tell you when it's just my opinion. I believe we've moved to a post-election era. And Harari was alluding to that when he said, you no longer go into a voting booth and choose who you want to represent you. We will choose your leaders, and you will like it. They also said... You will own nothing and learn to like it. Well, people look at, listen to that, you will own nothing, Annie, and they think, oh, I don't see how that's going to happen. You mean I won't own a house or I won't own my car anymore? Maybe not, but I don't think that's exactly what they were referring to. If you got an MR, an experimental mRNA injection, if you were one of those people who didn't want to, but you got it anyways because they threatened to take something away, in this case your job, do you really own your body? Do you still have bodily autonomy? No, you've just handed it over. This is what they mean by you will own nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't own your body, what do you own? If they can take that, your own bodily autonomy, there's nothing they can't take. Well, also, if, if, if we think about it, even as a um, Christian point of view, our body is our temple. Yes. Right? I, 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 I was asked by someone like, oh, you're an anti-vaccine type of person. I'm like, no, I'm not anti-vaccine. I am anti, don't tell me what to do. Right, right. You're going to tell me what to do with my body, uh, what kind of poison you prefer for me to inject myself with, and I'm going to sit there and I'm going to think, and please realize, I, in no shape or form am I claiming to be perfect. I am sinful. I do my best, but I do think of right now my choice is between a paycheck, a car, even dinner versus my promise to take care of my temple which one do i prefer to go for now i'm not saying everybody should do that that's what i did mm -hmm. when the whole vaccine thing was even when the mask thing was up i didn't wear the mask it started with the mask as exactly. i said that the, the mask was really the training program for the the vaccines i warned people about this before the vaccines even came out when they were just pushing the the the, the masks mm -hmm. And I said, people, this don't put but, these but masks on. Let me ask on. you this, Leo. We phrase them this way, but genuinely, did they push for the mask? No. They said, mask, mask, mask done. Everybody's wearing the mask. They didn't even need to push because they used the biggest, well, oldest trick in the book, fear. Yes. They they brought in fear and they didn't need to push they didn't need maybe one out of two thousand people would fight back against the mask everybody said oh it's just a mask just a mask you know it's it's just a mask and then it's i can't just tell you how many from. times i heard that it's just a mask it all started with just it but because the shadow or what was uh shadowing i i can't help but to keep thinking what muhammad of islam always said uh the 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 heaven, heaven is under the shadow of the sword. Mm. 
You're a Muslim, you want to make it to heaven, guess what you used to get there? Your sword and fear. And that, that's the thing. They used fear. And again, I'm not going to claim like I'm not afraid of anything. I am. Uh, but I don't let those fears drive me. Or sometimes I do let those uh, fears drive me to fight back, you know. But this fear of COVID and COVID and death, and that's the thing. I'm one of those people that strongly believes that the day I was born, my expiration date was issued. Yes. Done. It's sometimes you hear cases, young, old, you know, babies, the, 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 how they ended up dying. You're like, wow, that's just like, wow, you know. F fell in the shower and died. Exactly. Because your expiration date is issued. There is no nothing you can do to extend it or make it true. That's how the miracles of many suicide attempts failing happens. It's not their time. But majority of people didn't think about that, which brings me to the point of bring God back to this country. Yes. We need to work on putting our faith in Lord's hands instead of the government and the And what did FDA. God say? He said, I did not give you a spirit of what? Fear. Exactly. Um, but going back to the point about the fear, this didn't start with COVID, folks. I mean, that was really the same strategy they used after 9-11, if you recall, to get people to accept the pat-downs at the airports, the uh, snooping into what books you checked out at the library, um, the uh, monitoring us in different ways. Oh, it's just to catch the Islamic terrorists, they said. Some of us recognized back then in 2001 and 2002 that that was fake news. That was not the real reason why they established this whole new administrative state. They call it the Department of what? Homeland Security. And it's going to protect us from those scary Muslims. Isn't it interesting that we didn't get six or seven, eight years down the road, and all of a sudden those scary Muslims were told? They even built Hollywood shows trying to say how scary the Muslims were. Remember that movie, or not? Remember that series called 24? Yes. Yes. I was an avid um, audience of that show, okay. actually, yes. Right. So we get to around tw 2008 or nine. definitely by 2010, you could see a shift starting to take place. The Muslims, we're now told, are not that scary. They're, they have a peaceful religion. Oh, really? Uh, you just spent the last eight or nine years telling us that they wanted to kill us in jihads. And that we had to shake people down at the airport, little old white ladies. You know, we had to tell them to lift their dresses and uh, have a man pat them down and go through the x-ray uh, system and empty everything out of their purse and take off their shoes and take off your belt and stand here and stand there. We accepted all of these dictates, just like with COVID. That's where it started was after 9-11. And then they shifted the narrative on us. It's no longer the Muslims we need to be scared of. It's, it's the, the white, white Christian, white supremacists, and now they even call them white Christian nationalists. <laughs> See what they do, folks? You can never fall in line with these narratives because they will always switch the script, flip the script, script on you at some point and turn it inward. It starts off against the foreign enemy, the Muslims, the COVID. COVID came out of uh, China, they said. And then they turn it inward, and it's no longer about what they originally told you. So it never pays off to buy into these fear porn narratives. It's always with an agenda in the background. Very true. And another thing about narrative generally is... Uh, again, if it, it, let's look at it as Americans. As an American, I listen to the narratives, all of them, and then I take all of it into the Constitution. If it doesn't fit their trash, doesn't fit their You filter trash, it through. Done. The, as a Christian, I take them and go to Bible. Filter it through the Bible. Yeah. We, we got the guidelines, okay? The guidelines of our spirit and our heart and our mind and our body lies within the Bible. 
And then the guidance of um, a law of abiding, abiding citizenship as an American is within the Constitution. If it's not in neither one of those, <laughs> turn it off. Love turn it. it off. I love that. And yeah. that's the thing. The distraction in America. You know, one day it's this, that day is that, as you said, narrative kept changing. Yeah. I sometimes like I have a lot of lovely audience who are like, Oh, Annie, I don't mean to say Islam isn't the priority. There's just so much going on, I can't keep up with all of it and I agree. But then I can use myself again as an example. There's a lot going on, absolutely. And as you're aware, I do f I'm full time associate producer with Lindell TV. I am a part-time associate producer for Worldview Weekend. I have my daily show six days a week. I publish articles, run my own website and my own organization. I run my art store. You would think a lot is going on, right? Well, there is a lot going on. But I have learned to filter so I don't lose focus. That's what they want us to do. Yeah. They want to create this chaos. When you got the chaos going on, nobody's keeping their eyes on the prize anymore. Right. That's what's been going on since literally November 8, 2020 to today. Chaos, chaos, chaos. We got to learn to concentrate. We got to learn to stay like, um, I, it's not a nice example, but you know how uh, sometimes on horses they put the blinders on? Mm -hmm. That's what we need. We need those blinders in the right path though. Like narrow the path into the right path and then just follow that. All the extra distraction needs to take a back seat. We deal with them later. The, the, like the fact that you like, I don't know, I'm making this up, but you like um, ham and I like turkey is something we can fight over later. You know what I mean? As long as we keep the freedom to choose what we're eating, let's fight about what we're eating later. It's like literally... Hey, as long as it's not crickets, I'm all in. Any, <laughs> uh, well, crickets, definitely. But yeah, we need to relearn the process of how do we stay concentrated? Don't get distracted. Don't let the chaos come in and, you know, take over your mentality, your body, your uh, entire processor, because the moment, you know, you, the moment that happens is when they win. And by they, I want to be very clear. When I say they right now, I am talking about anyone, anyone who does not respect and love the American Constitution, whomever is trying to destroy American Americans, and on top of that, anyone who is not going to respect our free will to be followers of Christ. They include all those people. So I'm not going to even make a long list for you. I'm just going to say, as of right now, there is a very big group of people who wouldn't mind taking white Christian, right? I'm going to say not even white because I'm pretty, I mean, right. on camera, everybody oh, they see, say like white. Very... They say white, but they hate people of color who are not towing the, the, the line of the narrative. But you know yeah. what white does represent? America. When they say white this and white that, because of white being majority in America, they are literally meaning American. Mm -hmm. They just, because of PC culture, you know, African-American, and the person will say, like, I've never been to Africa, but we say African-American because right. we don't want to say black, or Middle Eastern because we don't want to say Persian, right? So when they say white, they are technically saying American Christians. If you read between the lines, they're referring to American Christians. Mm, all of them, no matter what color they are. Exactly, all of them. But uh, here's the thing, guys. We... Uh, I'm pretty sure you're all missing Brandon House deeply right now because he was gone for like an hour. Um, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this one hour of me and Leo. What we're going to do is we're going to take a uh, quick break. Uh, and then when we come back, I don't know who's going to be here, but I'm pretty sure Brandon will be here. <laughs> so stay tuned. And don't forget, again, if you're enjoying all of this special programming since yesterday brought to you by Lundell TV, make sure to go to mystore.com mystore.com or mypillow.com do all of your shopping for yourself for your friends for your family for christmas i don't know somebody's birthday any kind of shopping you need to do do it there and make sure to use the promo code thanks seven there's a s at the end thanks seven you get discounts 
and you continue supporting Mike Lindell, Lindell TV, Frankenspeech.com, Brown House, and everybody else who's here to tell you the truth and give you the very, very straight Christian worldview options and solutions such as Leah Holman, who can be found on leahholman.com. That's it. Leo Don't forget the second H. Yeah, H O H M A N N. 